So let's start by talking about uh, uncertainty. And uncertainty, as, as you know, is an intrinsic aspect of our reality. And we have uh, tirelessly seek to navigate and comprehend unpredictability, trying to anticipate the uncertain future and plan accordingly. And this is something that we have been doing from very old times, but also currently in the most sophisticated research labs in institutions and in businesses and, and academia. And we constantly, in both of those scenarios, anticipate and try to strive to anticipate the future and plan accordingly. And time series research, for those of you who are not familiar with the field, is the systematic, the mathematical approach to try to unveil that future and quantify the uncertainty about those potential future outcomes. And the field enables uh, to do a lot of diverse uh, things. It enables to forecast things as uh, tides in the different oceans, but also predicting closing values of our financial markets. Time series are, therefore, the essence, the DNA of many different fields like finance, commerce, energy, and technology. And we at Nixla, for those of, of you who don't know us, we have been working uh, on creating the most comprehensive open source time series ecosystem. We have different libraries that help practitioners do forecasting, anomaly detection at scale with traditional econometric models, but also with sophisticated machine learning and state-of-the-art uh, uh, deep learning uh, uh, methods. And uh, currently our software is being used by many different companies. You can see the logos there and we help many thousands of practitioners all around the world to perform their time series tasks. And when building this uh, comprehensive ecosystem, we learned definitely a lot by speaking to the different data science teams in, in the organizations. But one particular thing stood out while creating this, namely time series are extremely hard, extremely confusing, and very expensive. Only a few handful teams right now are able to perform state-of-the-art pipelines, but a lot of the teams struggle with the complexities of tuning deep learning models and creating a robust uh, production-ready pipelines. So we thought it would be really great if there was something like generative AI for time series. If there was a possibility to have a pre-trained model that people could just simply uh, uh, use to infer the data without the necessity of, of training it and building the pipelines. And that's why today we are extremely happy to present to you TimeGPT1, which is the first generative AI model for, for temporal data. It's the first foundation model for, for time series ever created. And what we did, uh, and you can read more about uh, this in the paper that we're going to publish, but we created a very extensive data set of diverse uh, uh, time series from finance, electricity, web traffic, retail, tourism, IoT, healthcare, transport, economics, and trained a large uh, transformer-based model that we, that we designed and created. And that allows now for practitioners like you to do zero shot inference on, on the data. We benchmarked this model at the bottom of the table against uh, other state of the art models. One very important clarification is time GPT here is doing zero shot inference. That means the model never saw that data before while the other models are uh, doing time series in a classical way, namely by training the model on the, on the, whole, on the whole data set. And as you can see, time GPT consistently performs among the top uh, models uh, and it's better than many state-of-the-art deep learning architectures. The amazing thing is that it's orders of magnitude faster because you don't have to pay for training, you just pay for the inference. And this also makes it a lot simpler because you don't have to write the whole pipeline. You just simply query an API and obviously you can fine tune in your own enterprise data. And the, the thing that we find really exciting is that you don't need to be a time series expert to start uh, leveraging the power of time GPT. You just simply have to code a couple of lines by authenticating yourself and uh, doing uh, forecasts. So today we are going to uh, do what 
people shouldn't do and do a live demo of Time GPT for you. And instead of us telling you how great it is, we are gonna show you live how you can start implementing uh, Time GPT. For that, I will ask uh, my co-founder Azul to join me on the stage and guide you through the live demo. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be to be here. So let me make this bigger. So in this live demo, I will be showing how you can use Time GPT. In this live demo, I will be using Beam, but you can use any editor you want. So let's write some code. To start, uh, let's imagine that you work for an electricity company and you want to predict the future demand of the electricity. And this is really important because you need to make decisions about the future. And the second problem that you have is that you have a lot of time series, a lot of uh, different uh, regions, and you want to, to predict all of time series. So in this case, we have a partitioned uh, data, data frame uh, in S3. Uh, it is composed by 10,000 uh, time series grouped by uh, different, different files in the, in the parquet file. So um, sorry about that. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just import the necessary libraries. So let me, let me do that. So basically, I imported Ray and also TimeGPT and also the plot uh, function to plot uh, the time series. So the next thing I'm going to do is just start a, a Ray cluster. Let me, let me do that. And then I will authenticate it uh, time, G time GPT. Then I'll be downla uh, downla do downloading the, the historical data. Basically, I will be using the distributed engine of, of Ray. So I will be reading in the, in the cluster uh, the S3 data I just uh, showed you. So let's run this, this code and let's see our time series. So until now, we, we, we only uh, instantiate our, our cluster, we instantiate the time GPT, time GPT class, and then we will be plotting uh, eight time series at random. So as you can see, your time series has a lot of uh, seasonal strength, seasonal, seasonal periods. Uh, for example, in, in some cases, uh, the demand of, the, of electricity reduces, and in other cases, it, it increases. So we want to use a model that, that captures those, those seasonalities. So let's use TimeGPT to forecast uh, this time series. What is the old way to do that? What, what was the old way to do this before, before TimeGPT? So before this, you, need, you, you have to... Uh, implement uh, data pre-processing, data loading, and uh, hyperparameter optimization, model selection. So let me, let me show you uh, the old way to, sorry, the old way to, to do this. 
So you need to import a lot of libraries, you need to do hyperparameter optimization, more than one lines of code. But of course, we don't need that. With TimeGPT, you just need to call uh, the forecast method. And what is really impressive about this is that uh, TimeGPT receives any data frame. So if your time series is a array data set, you can use array to distribute uh, the calls to the, to the API. So let me, let me do that. So in this case, we are forecasting uh, 24 steps ahead, which means that we are forecasting uh, one day ahead. And in this case, each worker is calling uh, the TimeGPT API. So everything is, is, is being done in the, in the, in the web. And uh, every worker is, is calling the, the TimeGPT API. Right now, we are using the Python SDK, but of course, you can use any la language that you want. And just like that, you have forecast for your time series, for your uh, 10,000th 10, time series. And as you can see, the forecast is really good. It's, the, it's, it's colored in yellow. And as you can see, the forecast uh, captures the, the seasonality on, on your data. And often, it is also important to detect anomalies. With TimeGPT, you can do that, just adding a couple of, of more parameters. Let me, let me do that. And, and detect anomalies is really important, in particular in this use case, because of course you want to participate in the, in the electricity market or, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe do some optimization regarding the, regarding the, the electricity demand. And uh, as you can see, with only two more additional parameters, you can, you can detect your anomalies really, really easy. Here we are just calling the, the endpoint of time, of time GPT. And hopefully, this will, uh, this will be plotting the, the anomalies of our, our, of our data set. We have like 10 seconds. Let's see what happens. And yeah, just like that, for example, here we can see that TimeGPT detects the anomaly, which is uh, a really, really, really good uh, detection because as you can see, this, this anomaly is, is, is really a peak. So, so basically, we are detecting uh, anomalies with TimeGPT. So uh, I think that would be all. Thank you very much.